Hey, this is Aaron Rubinowitz for CreativeCow.net. A very common question that we see at the Creative Cow After Effects Forum is how do I create 3D extruded text in After Effects? There are actually several ways to do this, and I'm going to show you a few, but I'm also going to tell you that I didn't come up with these solutions on my own. I got these and many other techniques from reading posts at the Creative Cow After Effects Forum or by watching the myriad of tutorials found at the Cow. Now the first technique I'm going to show you came from a Creative Cow tutorial by Trailer Woodall of SpotKit.net. I'm going to show you the very basics of his technique along with some of my own thoughts, and then I suggest you watch the original tutorial for even more ideas. So here I am in After Effects with a composition containing some text that I've created using the text tool. Now in my project window, I'm going to take this text precomposition and I'll nest it into a new composition. Then I'll make the nested composition layer 3D by turning on its 3D switch. Next, I'll make a bunch of duplicates by selecting the text precomposition and hitting Control D or Command D if you're on a Macintosh. I'll create about 20 duplicates. When that's done, I'll select my second text precomposition layer and hit P to reveal its position. Then I'll move the layer back a little bit in 3D space by setting the Z property for the position value to 3. Then I'll do the same for the rest each time moving the layer back 3 units in Z space. So the second layer's position Z value will be set to 6 and then the third layer's position Z value will be set to 9 and so on. When I'm done I have some nice 3D looking text that I can rotate around with my 3D camera. The reason we made the text a precomposition and didn't just use it as is, is because I can jump back into my text precomposition and change the original text, and then in my main composition, every layer updates. If each of these layers was a separate layer, then we'd have to update each text layer individually, and that could take a lot of time. Now this solution isn't perfect by far. For starters, as you rotate around the text, it starts to fall apart because you can see that the text is actually several flat layers. But if you're not rotating too much, you can get away with it. Also, if you're willing to create more layers and then put them closer together, you'll get better results, but with the slowdown of using that many more layers in 3D. The more you want to rotate around the text, the more layers closer together that you're going to need. Also, the effect doesn't really hold together very well when you're not using a stroke around the text as it becomes very hard to read. One solution is to add lighting and shadows into the composition, but of course this will also slow things down. Another solution is to change the color of the front layer slightly or even drastically. Here I'm using a hue and saturation effect to change the color, and when I'm done, as you can see, it becomes a lot more legible. Anyway, this technique has been discussed in the After Effects forum at great length, and there are even expressions that can make it much easier to achieve. So don't forget to use the cow's powerful search engine to find and read the different ideas people have had for both creating this effect and improving the workflow for doing it. Now another solution for creating this effect is to use the shatter effect. A while back, creative cow leader Roland Kallenberg wrote a great tutorial on using Shatter to create a 3D extruded logo. Since then, this idea has been expanded on by many people to create 3D extruded text, and there's more than one way to do it. I'll show you my recipe, which I think is a little simpler than most, but if for some reason it's not floating your boat, check the After Effects forum for more options. So here I am in After Effects with a basic text layer. Now I'll add the Shatter effect to the text layer, by first selecting the text layer and then choosing Effect, Simulation, Shatter. Now the reason I'm adding this effect is because in addition to being able to shatter a layer, it can also extrude the shattered pieces. So in the Effects panel, set the View pulldown to Rendered, which allows us to see the rendered effect. Right now, our view is head-on, which is going to make it difficult to see the extrusion. So I'm going to add a 3D camera into the composition so that I can look at the effect from a different angle. Besides, you're going to need it later when you want to rotate around it or move in 3D space. So here goes. Choose Layer, New, Camera. I'll choose the 50 millimeter preset and I'll click OK. Then I need to tell the shatter effect to use our 3D camera. So select the text layer and in the effects panel, set the camera system pull down to the composition camera. 
Now I can use the camera tools located here at the top to rotate around the shot. Okay, this is not looking right. There's no real extrusion here. For the most part, it just looks like two 3D layers close to each other in 3D space. Uh, but don't worry about that just yet. If you scroll down in time a little bit, you'll see that we have bigger fish to fry. The text is shattering, and that's definitely not what we want. We want our text to hang around in 3D space. So, in the effects panel, twirl down the shape section and set the pattern to custom. This allows us to use a custom shatter map instead of the standard shapes that come with the effect. Next, set the shatter map to our text layer. By doing this, we're telling After Effects to use the text layer as the shape for the shatter and ultimately the extrusion that we'll create. Next, twirl down the section called Force One, uh, not to be confused with Air Force One, get off my plane, and set the strength to zero. This stops the text from shattering. However, the shatter effect is still applying some gravity to the text. Moving down in the timeline a little bit, you can see that the text is falling towards the bottom of the screen. So, to stop that from happening, in the Effects panel, twirl down the Physics section and set the gravity to zero. Okay, now let's work some magic here. I'm just going to twirl up the Force 1 and Physics sections of the effect since we won't be working with them anymore. Great. Back in the Shape section of our Shatter effect, set the Extrusion depth up a bit. I'm going to set it to 3. Well, that's starting to look better. But you know, it's a bit weird, especially around the sides where you can see through things. But don't worry, I can easily change this. In the effects panel, I'll twirl down the texture section, and for the side mode, I'll set it to color, which automatically turns the sides gray. Actually, as you can see here at the top of the texture section, the color is, in fact, white. But due to the effects current setting for lighting, it's showing up as gray. I'm going to change this to red, by clicking on the color swatch and choosing red in the color picker. Of course, since our lighting is still affecting the color, this will look more like a burgundy. Okay, let's fix the lighting issue. The shatter effect comes with its own lighting system, but you can use the first light in your composition as the light source. Right now, I don't have one, but I can easily create one. Choose Layer, New, Light. I'll just use a parallel light with the color set to white and an intensity of 100%. I'll click OK and it's been added into the composition. But as you can see, the text is not being affected. For that, we have to select our text layer and then go back into the effects panel and twirl down the lighting section. If we set the light type property pull down to first composition light, we can immediately see a difference. And at this point, you'll probably want to adjust your lighting, and perhaps your camera angle and position. But as you can see, you now have some decent looking 3D text. Okay, now if you're willing to spend a few bucks and you really want to create 3D text with more flexibility for shape, texture, and animation, then consider a plugin like Zaxworks 3D Invigorator or ProAnimator, which you can find at zaxworks.com. Look, I'm not trying to get you to spend money here, just give you a solution. For real 3D text directly in After Effects, there really is no better way. For example, Zaxworks allows you to create custom edges and bevels. If you want to learn how to use these features effectively, check out Creative Cow leader Serge Hamad's video tutorial on creating custom edges at creativecow.net. You'll also get some information on Serge's upcoming Creative Cow Master Series DVD covering Zaxworks 3D Invigorator in depth. Another point to make is that you may find that working directly in After Effects for creating 3D text is cumbersome. Often for 3D text I'll work in an actual 3D program like Maxon Cinema 4D because it suits my workflow better. Also I find that animating the text is a lot easier and I have more control over look and feel. If your 3D program can share a 3D camera with After Effects, as Cinema 4D and many other 3D applications can, then you can do a lot with 3D text for After Effects, even though you're working in a different program. But again, it's not directly in After Effects, so if your client is prone to frequent changes while on tight deadlines, you might be better off with one of the previous methods if you can get away with it. Anyway, I hope this gives you some ideas for getting the 3D text look that you want. 
In an upcoming tutorial, I'll be talking about the new per-character 3D text animation found in After Effects CS3, which is a whole other story, so stay tuned. Oh, one last thing. Shameless plug here. I have a new Creative Cow Master Series training DVD coming out called Internet Kill the Video Star, a guide to creating video for the web. There's a trailer for it at the end of this, so don't hit stop unless you really don't want to see it. Okay, that's it. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net. Get off my tutorial. In a world where video artists struggle against the tyrannies of compression, where art is destroyed by the merciless cruelties of the web, one man will rise up and lead the rebellion. Oh, hey! <laughs> Man, I love a good audiobook. From the Creative Cow Master Series of Training comes a DVD of epic proportions. Internet Kill the Video Star. Coming soon. Learn more about getting your video content to your audience on the new Creative Cow Master Series DVD, Internet Kill the Video Star, which you can find at training.creativecow.net.